Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you, dear students? We had a very easy lesson, which was the grammar lesson. I hope that you did your homework, which we are going to revise together, inshallah. So we have our uh, unit, which is about influential people. We talked about different characters. And then we moved on to the grammar lesson, in which we studied the four structures used to be used to was or we're going to and would. Now we have our structures here or the graph that we planned and uh, we just summarized in uh, the lesson before. Going to the grammar exercises, we have on page number 23 the homework which we are going to complete now. Yes. Now we have here, have a favorite teacher. So here we are going to use either would or used to. So we have here, what did you write as an example? I have my example. I used to have a favorite geography teacher. The second one, help with the chores. What did you write? Now I'm going to give you my example here. When I was younger, I didn't used to help with the chores. You can see that I used here negative. We have after that, hate going to bed. When I was little, I used to hate going to bed early. And we have the number eight, make up funny stories. Here I gave an example. When my brother and I were go young, we would make up funny stories. So here these are examples. You uh, may have done something even better than my examples here. So the main thing is to use either used to or would. We have the second exercise, which is to use was or were going to. We have also three sentences to complete. And just to remind you that this is the second part, so we're going to start from the beginning. We have, but he didn't get accepted. So what did you write? We have here an example. He was going to attend that university, but he didn't get accepted. Number five but we were too nervous. So just imagine these situations that you may be nervous in. We have here as an example, we were going to try skydiving. Skydiving is something exciting and dangerous at the same time. We were going to try it, but we were too nervous. After that, we have here six, but she didn't feel well. Also, a lot of plans are, uh, may be canceled because of illness. So we have here, she was going to come to the party, but she didn't feel well. So this is our homework. Now, there is the idea of all in one. All in one, as I mentioned before, that we have uh, sentences or a kind of paragraph that may be written using what you have learned before. So we have this four structures. Can I apply them in the same content together Yes, we can. So we're going to see here the examples that we have here. I have a lot of beautiful memories. We used to live in a small town on the coast. We used to go to the beach every weekend. We would build sand castles big enough for us to enter. We would meet different kids and play all day. Now here, before I move on, note that we have these structures and the base form, which is used with different verbs. Completing. I was used to the hot and humid weather, so I didn't mind building sandcastles for hours. We were going to participate in a competition for the best sandcastle, but unfortunately, we moved. I used to feel sad all the time because I missed the beach. The good thing, though, is that I'm still used to the hot and humid weather, so I wouldn't mind staying out all day even if it is hot. I was going to visit my beautiful town, but I got busy. I'm still planning to visit on my next vacation. So here, the good idea is to relate relate between your experiences and the structures and the vocabulary that you study and learn throughout our book 
or even everyday language. So as long as you are using the structures, you are going to get used to them, get used to them, and apply them in your everyday language. Some people like to travel on a vacation for a change. Now here, I want you just to think about this sentence with me. Some people, they like to travel on a vacation for a change. Now here, vacations, what do they need? When you go on a vacation, if you want to travel, of course you need something. And here also there is another hint. Now you can see that we have here the same person and we have a question. What changes the condition from rags to riches? So I explained to you the concept or the idea of rags and riches. Now rich is a clear word, but rags means like this person, he is wearing rags, which means that he is in a poor situation. Now what changes the condition? If I want to go traveling abroad, for example, I need something. Now we have something very important. Now we can see that there is a hint in the picture. Of course we need money. So we are going to go in the topic of money. And there is a question, in your opinion, how important is money? Now can you say that money is very important? Is it something that you can live without? Is it a reason for happiness? Can you be happy without money? All of these questions can be aroused in your mind. Also, there is another question. Can people achieve goals and be happy without being rich? So here, there is a different question. It's not about having money. It's about being rich. Can you be happy without being rich? Can you achieve goals? Now, as students, you have goals to complete your studies, to get high marks. Does this need money? or can you achieve without? Now this is just an example for you to think about. We are going to talk about this topic. So since we are talking about money, imagine you just got 30,000 riyals. So you have as a gift or someone gave you 30,000, you just got it, what are you going to do with it? So here, just visualize and imagine with me, what would you do with that amount of money? Now, you can think about different things. Would you save it? Would you buy something? Would you do something with it? So there are many things that comes in mind. There are discussing options, as I just started. We have your kind of discussion. The discussing options are what we are going to take in our conversation lesson. So we are going to start with the objectives here. Number one, to use specific phrases in discussion. Number two, to give the meanings of words based on the text. Number three, to use real talk in sentences. And number four, to recognize the need for balance between wastefulness and appropriateness in consuming food or spending money. Now we are going to meet Ahmed and Ibrahim. They are the uh, characters that we have in our conversation lesson. We are going to listen to the conversation between them and the topic that we just mentioned. So Ahmed's parents have given him 30,000 for graduation. Listen to the conversation between Ahmed and Ibrahim. Now we're going to start. My parents gave me 30,000 reals for graduation. Wow. What are you going to do with all that cash? I don't know. I'm going around in circles about it, driving myself and everyone else crazy. At first, I was going to do something really indulgent with it, like take a vacation. I was ready to book it, but then I got cold feet. Why? I think a vacation sounds like a great idea. You've worked really hard for four years. You deserve a break. That's true. But on the other hand, I don't want to spend all that money on something that will be over in a week. So then, I was thinking of buying something useful, like a used car. That's a good idea. Yeah, it would be a great convenience to have a car. But, at the same time, I'm used to taking public transportation, and I really don't need it. Frankly, 
I can't think of anything that I really need. So maybe I should put the money aside for a rainy day. Well, yes. I suppose the alternative would be to just put it in the bank until you need it. Right. But then again, what's the point of having money if you're not enjoying it? Maybe I should do something indulgent with it. Like take that vacation. Now I see how you're driving everyone crazy. Now, we listened to the conversation between the two boys here, and you can see that Ahmed couldn't make up his mind. He was thinking about a lot of things. So did he decide what to do with the money? We don't know. We do have our questions, which are in the discussion part we have here about the conversation. The first question is, what options is Ahmed considering? So basically, he mentioned three or sorry, three options that we have here. Now, the three options that we have here is maybe traveling. We have here also buying a car. And he did mention saving his money. We have also, uh, before we move on, we have uh, hadith. Now, we are going to relate between what we have here and why. Why is it mentioned in this part specifically? قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلوا واشربوا وتصدقوا والبسوا ما لم يخالط إسراف ولا مخيلة. So here it is important to think about what you are doing with your money. So like Ahmed here, he is thinking about different things, but he may or he must actually pay attention in what he is spending his money on. The second question, and we have here a real talk phrase. So how is he driving people crazy? Is it true that he is driving them crazy, or is this just a phrase here? So how, how is he driving everyone crazy? Now we can say that he goes around in circles. So this doesn't mean that he's actually moving in circles, but he is thinking about something and going back to it again and again. He gets cold feet. So whenever he decides to do something, he feels that he is scared. So we have here two phrases, real talk phrases. We have here goes around in circles, which means that something is just, you can't decide, you go back and forth to it. And we have here he gets cold feet, doesn't mean like we can see in the picture, but it means that you feel scared and you don't go ahead with doing something. We have here also another picture. The third question we have here, what do you think he'll do with the money and why? So what do you think he decided to do at the very end and why? There are many options. Here the question is for you. Would you mind getting that amount of cash? Now cash is a familiar word that is which, uh, which is also used as real talk. And the question, would you mind do you think that if you have this money, you would enjoy it? Would you do something with it? Some other people, they would put the money aside, or this is a question for you. Would you put the money aside for a rainy day? So do you think that this phrase here it means that I'm going to just wait until it rains? Or does it mean something different? Now, when we say that we put money aside for a rainy day, it means usually until I need the money. Now, what are the discussing options that Ahmed used here in the discussion? We have here the first one, at the same time. So it was, he was thinking about an option, but going back and forth. At the same time, this may be good. But then again, so he is thinking about one choice, but then again, thinking about the other. I could always, so he's also thinking, I could always spend the money on things that I enjoy. On the other hand, means that I have an option in one hand, but on the other, I have another option. The alternative would be to, the alternative, the best choice. What do you think? We have the last one. Would you think, what would you think about? So when I want someone's opinion, what would you think about buying a car? What would you think about saving or investing the money? And so on.
So these are phrases. It is your turn to role play with a partner, discuss a choice that one of you has to make, then choice, uh, the choice can be real or made up. Use phrases for discussing options. So you are going to use the phrases that we have in the book here. You can think about different situations. Now I'm sure that there are many topics that you can discuss together using our phrases here. Since we are talking about money, we are going to move on with our lesson, which is the listening part. So we have the listening lesson in our unit. We have the objectives of our listening lesson to use specific phrases in discussion and to enumerate the appearance of different forms of money through a listening task. Now listen to the lecture about the history of money. Write the date by each form of money the number, the forms of money in the order they, are, they were used. So here we have different vocabulary. You can use the vocabulary or actually some of these words, they may be new. So it's a chance to use these words in sentences. We have here the first example. Of course, you can see that we have here one, two, three, four, five, six parts in the table. Now the first one is actually done for you. We have here cowrie shells, which were uh, appeared yes in 1200 BCE. Now you can see that there is the number two, which means that this is the order. So you are going to listen. You are going to just uh, order what are the uh, or how the money appeared. Now we do have uh, the words. We have paper money. We are familiar with the paper money that we are we use today. There is an unusual word, which is bartering. We have electronic money. Do you use electronic money? Inexpensive metal coins and coins made of valuable metals. So we actually have here the opposite of the first one. So you are going to listen, and then you are going to just to order them, depending, of course, on the year. The first way in which goods were bought was not with money. Instead, people used to trade something of value that they possessed for something they needed. The most common things to trade with were cattle and crops, like corn and wheat. So, for example, if you were a farmer, you might trade your corn with a butcher for meat. The butcher might trade his meat with a shoemaker for shoes. This kind of trade was called bartering. Bartering began as far back as 9000 BCE, however, there was a problem with bartering. What if someone had something to trade but no one wanted or needed it? Or what if people could not agree on what was a fair trade? To solve this problem, the first kind of money came about around 1200 BCE in China, where people would use special shells called cowrie shells to purchase goods. These shells were the most widely and longest used form of money in history. In some parts of Africa these shells were used until the middle of the 1900s. The earliest metal coins were produced in China around 1000 B. C. E. The coins were made out of an inexpensive metal and had holes in them so that they could be put together to make a chain. The earliest coins made of valuable metals were silver coins produced in Turkey around 500 BC. Coins made of silver, bronze, and gold were soon being used by the Greeks, Romans, and Persians. By 800 CE, the first paper money had appeared in China. This form of money eventually became common around the world. At one point, people probably thought cowrie shells were going to be used forever. That's what many of us think about coins and paper money now. But money is likely to continue to change. In fact, a new kind of money is already being exchanged over the internet. This money, called electronic money or digital cash, functions like real cash, except it's not on paper. The money in a bank account is converted to a digital code, which can be used to make purchases. While digital cash is very new, it is expected to become common in the years ahead. Okay, are you ready? Yes, we have our answers. We're going to just answer the task that we have here. 
So I'm going to do it, and you're going to check your answers with me. We have number one. Which one do you think is number one? Now we can see that this is the unusual word here, bartering. Bartering, when did it appear? It appeared 9000 BCE. Then we have number two is already uh, here. So we have number three. We have the four options. So we're going to say that number three is inexpensive metal coins that appeared in 1000 BCE. After that, we have number four, coins made of valuable metals, which appeared, we have here, in 500 BCE. And it is very clear now that we have our fifth option, the paper money. Now, paper money appeared 800 CE, leading to the last one, which is electronic money that it is used or uh, which is used today. So we have here an interesting uh, script about money. Now we have our outline. We, had, uh, we did a lot today. We did our grammar exercises. We had the conversation. We had our listening. So what did we do? First of all, we have the conversation. We applied real talk in new sentences. We, of course, before listened and answered questions and predicted meanings of words from the text. Then we have using discussing phrases and sentences. So I expect you to use these phrases in your role play with your colleagues or classmates. Then we moved on at the same topic, which is about money. So we have here money. We did the listening task, which is to listen. And then we answered the questions. We enumerated the appearance of money forms. So these were our exercises for the day. We had uh, our uh, uh, discussions. And it is time for your discussion with your classmates. So be prepared. And we're going to go back, inshallah, to them in our next lesson, inshallah.